Trapping is a sport, the hottest mixtape in the streets. That nigga go hard, like he go hard, whatever he do. He was performing everywhere, BB Kings. I know you see me on the road, right? You know I keep the shooters with me at my show, right? He even built his own studio. He dropped his first mixtape. Have been on the radio. Right when we was there, Def Jam about to sign him. Hey. A judge sentences a local man to 17, 17. 17 years in prison. He was wrongfully convicted and gave 17 years of his life. That's all he kept screaming at the phone. Every time he called, I didn't do it. He said, yo, Ito, is there really a God, bro? Did God just do this to me? Because a lot of people love this man. They know he's innocent. Even cops themselves know he's innocent. The justice system is, is, is one-sided. The victim in this case, Nigel William, who testified at the first trial, he is willing to come back. It couldn't have been him. We want to bring him home. He deserved to be home. That's it. Wish me luck, man. My mother moved into this building, couple projects, when I was about 10 years old. It was hard, raising six boys and one girl. My mom had seven of us. There wasn't always enough winter coats or new sneakers for school. Sometimes there wasn't even enough food to eat at night. I remember moving from my grandmother's when I was about 10 to a shelter in Brooklyn with my mom's and my little brother, Kito. The shelter life, it was hard for them because sometimes, like, you know, like... Can you give me a minute? One thing I can say about my mom for sure, despite all the ups and downs and, and whatever mistakes she might have made in her past, I know one thing, if I ain't got nobody else in this world, I know I got my mom. I think it was hard for them. Everything I did was the best I could do. Being in that shelter forced me to grow up faster than I expected. At 12 years old, I figured out ways to make money to provide for my family. He used to go like to the supermarkets to pack bags. He would start probably from when he came out of school, three o'clock, and come back with a whole bag of groceries and all that stuff for me and the kids. You already knew he was gonna be like something special. We didn't have a PlayStation or an Xbox, so the only thing that was for me to do was write. Everything I was going through, I put it on that pen and paper. And every time I wrote music and I let my friends hear it and I got their reactions, it made me want to do it more. Your boy's still in the hall, like elevator piss. Uh -huh. Had it rough growing up, man, I hated Christmas. No gifts, just a fucking landlord eviction. Oh! I don't know why he didn't play ball, he was 6'3", but he got into the rapping thing, and once he got into the rapping thing, he loved it ever since. My boy was on another level with this shit. That nigga go hard, like, he go hard, whatever he do. When he was younger, we used to just record him on the phone. East side, whole shit down like gravity. They played tough, but I know their sweet spot like a cavity. They're played out, I'll leave them dead like batteries. He was on before, the eight boogies. The, the, the little TJs and all of them. Maybe you could be her MCM if you risk go. That's just cold. I ain't going trip though. It's a cold world, J. Cole told you this so. A lot of dudes rap, man, but a lot of dudes is not lyrical. And a lot of dudes don't give you that. Hefe give you that, that uh. They talk them out the juice, they cool, they cool juice gleam. And I believe it when I see it. I see it and I believe it. These uh. lame niggas looking for a life like semen. Eventually, I just thought that I should take my talents to the studio and I started expressing myself in the booth. We was in the studio damn near every day. Sometimes six, five in the morning. It's so crazy, he even built his own studio. Being in my studio was definitely my happy place. I could just wake up, get right to it. And just watching him just regularly rapping to YouTube views going up. Yo, Sinead Entertainment, we doing it. I wanna know what the fuck gave him the heart. You put these niggas next to birds, you can't tell them apart. They think they fishing for fishes, but they fucking with sharks. He was about to take off. Everything was perfect. We made it out the shelter. I was feeling like the hard times was behind me. I had my own studio. Life was just the way I envisioned it. Until September 4th. 911, what's your emergency? Somebody got shot. I just heard the kids screaming. In September 2011, up at 99th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue, Nigel Williams was shot in the chest. Mr. Mejia was arrested two, two and a half days later when cops knocked on his door. FBI, open up! Not even telling him what he's accused of and just talking about 
the fact that he's an alleged drug dealer and drugs are involved and we just want you to come down for some interviews, street activity, none of which were true. I had no idea what was going on. He was scared and he was confused. I didn't know that somebody was shot. My day on September 4th basically revolved around us going to Juve that night. I couldn't believe it. We were shot. I was devastated. I was with the kids literally all weekend. This is about Affie Davis. As you can see, witness statement on September 4th, 2011. I remember making plans with my friends, the owners included, to go to a parade in Brooklyn. It was Labor Day weekend. We was going to Juve. Juve is the parade in Brooklyn. We was going to see some girls, have some fun. I remember he wanted to get his hair done. We met on 104th Street between Park and Madison so that we could all take the train together before we started walking to the train station. We took pictures. This is the owner's right here. As you can see, just had his hair blown out. Just got it done on East 104th Street. After a few hours of sitting in a cell, the cop told me that I was being arrested for attempt murder. Mr. Mejia was accused of attempted murder assault in the first degree and criminal possession of a weapon. It was definitely serious. They processed me, took me straight to Rikers Island. They gave me a phone call and I called my mom. You have a collect call from an inmate in Rikers Island Correctional Facility. That's all he kept screaming at the phone. Every time he called, I didn't do it. I couldn't believe it. Imagine somebody telling you you did something and you know you didn't do it. I was 19 years old. I ain't never been in jail. I'm thinking somebody gonna come save me. For the sound of his voice, the person he is, I knew he didn't do that. I didn't know nothing about this system. I was naive. He had no criminal record. I was staying on Rikers Island for about two years. Every single night, I prayed and I thought that I would go home because I knew that I didn't do this. And they eventually let me go. It was the happiest day of my life when they let me go. Only thing I could think about was getting back in the studio. When he came home, he was serious. And he was going in. This for my niggas pushing rocks all up in them streets. I was starving in that box. Now it's time to eat. Mm. Before you put me back in jail, put me under six. I was out here looking hurt. I couldn't get a bitch. Talk to him, man. There should be no reason. It's seven degrees out and you in another freezing. There should be no reason. I see a track strong. Girl, how long you had that weed? Miami for the weekend just to kick it with my side piece. Her favorite question is who you fucking besides me? Tell her, tell her that I'm making a deposit. 40,000 in my stash, I couldn't have made this shit in college. And hey. So I remember like yesterday, I had an all white Mercedes Benz with BBS rims. Ooh, got the band popping. Four when the morning track phone still rock. I had to let him hold it for the video shoot. I thought that they were going to dismiss the case, but they decided to take me to trial. And a mistrial occurred in that case for juror misconduct, nothing to do with Mr. Mejia. And during the process of going to court, the district attorney was trying to play my music videos in court and use it against me. So my lawyer advised that I shouldn't make any music. I didn't know what my life was going to be in a few years. I went against his recommendation. Remember running through the traps since the team. Remember the first time I ever stuffed 10 racks in my jeans. I got a gap with a beat. I rap about the culture, the things that's going on where I'm from, man. Meek Mills do the same thing. Uh, I want everything my niggas want except for the hoes they fucking. Roll that window down and nigga, we get the bussin'. Jay-Z do the same thing. I got myself a gun. We might talk about guns or drugs, but we just painting a picture that I saw and they try to use that against me at court. Prosecutors say specific Boosie lyrics equal intent. Defense attorneys say it's just a rapper doing his job. I was in the cut, I was sitting on the bleachers. See me in off the rip, now everybody want a feature. Hefe was doing his own thing with the music. Ito was doing the management with the trap life. I brought us together, I'm like, yo, listen, bro. We gonna just take this shit to the moon. Charlie C, Hef. Once I started working with Ito and Charlie making music, that's when I really seen everything falling in place. From that day on, Everything was going up. He was performing everywhere, BB King. Hefe killing every stage. 
Man, we turned all this up. Everywhere we went, he shut it down. It was about that time. I just wanted to get the street sound that they could feel. Drop this first mixtape. Trapping is a sport. Fire. One through twelve. I stay with fire. CDs That's a fact. Me. Whoever need a CD, we got them over here, man. We making thousands of CDs. Like people coming to buy ten CDs at a time. So I actually even got the mixtape on me. When this joint dropped, this was the hottest mixtape in Harlem. Everywhere, this shit had the streets buzzing. For all the fame shit, like, we've been rapping together for hours. It's five yo four from the far side, nigga. And this that Harlem, the BK shit. Huh? This that we'll do a hundred on the freeway shit. I've been on the radio. Look out the window, nigga, blasting what's up, huh? That was everything I ever dreamed of, and. That's when I noticed, like, damn, my dreams is really coming true. This shit is happening. To me, we made it. We did everything we wanted to do. But the next step, it was like, the next step was when I got that email. I got that email from Dev Jam. They basically wanted him to perform in the office. And that same week is when he started trial. At that second trial, he was acquitted of the top count of attempted murder, and later on, Nigel Williams testified. It couldn't have been him. So the shooter was about 5'8", dark skin. Mr. Mejia is roughly 6'2", six 6'3", six and prior to his trial, there was a lineup conducted. The cops come to the hospital, and now they pull out a whole lineup different guys. I look at each person on the list and they was like, have you seen C? And I'm looking at the guy, never seen him before. So I'm like, no, I don't know who this is. And then they're like, you sure you know, you, you sure you know who this is? And I'm like, no, I never seen this guy. Like, I literally never seen this guy before. It's like, you sure you don't know who letter C is? And I'm just like, I'm positive. It was to a point where I was getting frustrated. My father was like, listen, I'm sorry, but y'all, okay, y'all have to leave now. Like, I just got shot eight hours ago, and like, y'all forcing me to pick somebody. I'm sure strategically, after the prosecutor heard from that witness stating, well, it doesn't look like the guy who shot me, and I can't be sure, she refused to put him up on the witness stand for trial number three, just relying on the mother. They say the only evidence they have in court is the kid's mom saying that it was my son that did it. When you look at my situation, it makes no sense because I had no past problems with Nigel. We never got into any altercation. For all I know now, he was just an aspiring basketball player. I figure the only reason I'm here is because his mother misidentified me. Throughout the whole trial, with my friends saying that they, they saw who it was, they know for a fact that it wasn't Hefe, but also dealing on the opposite side with my mom, she also had a chance to see the lineup. Who knows, they probably pressured her as well to pick him. What the mom is saying, of course, that's her son. She's gonna wanna blame somebody. She's gonna wanna blame somebody. And there's kids that was there, the victim's friend, took the stand saying that it wasn't my son. I know what he looked like. I know the description that we gave. They just was trying to pinpoint him. The cops put me and my mom in the room, and then they show us like, you know, different pictures of different people. I guess from different projects. And then they were just asking like, did this person look like the person, did this person? And then they all didn't look. So I'm just like, nah, nah, nah. From there, they just said, you could go now and just never contacted me again. The cops stopped talking to me. Off the information that I gave, it wasn't helpful for them in this situation. Now, one other 
tangential piece of evidence that they're claiming connects them is a cell phone tower is pinging nearby, but the cell phone towers are very, very inaccurate. They cannot put you in a specific, they put you in an area of town. And we know Mr. Mejia was up on 104th Street, so if his cell phone was pinging, that's close enough for the prosecutor to say, oh, that pinging makes him available for the 99th Street shootout. There was no evidence that tied me to this shooting. They ain't even talking my alibi witnesses. It's crazy to me because I was actually with him and I know he didn't do it. He's an innocent man. It's even more crazy because his career was taken off. This one conversation me and have had, and it was about his case. And he's like, yo, bro, they're trying to give me seven. Seven years. They wanted me to plead guilty and say that I shot this person. They was offering me seven years. I'm like, seven years? I didn't do this. It was even times where they offered them something lower, and I'm like, yo, bro, you should just jump on that even though you ain't do it, bro. And I sat there, and I told them, I'm like, yo, bro, like, I know you ain't do it, but like, seven years, you'll come home a little quicker. You know what he said? He's like, Ito, God know I ain't do this. He said, if I had something to do with this, I'll take the seven years, bro. Like, if I, if I had anything to do with it. You say you did it or you say you didn't do it, you're fighting for your life regardless. The jury could not reach a verdict on the bottom two counts in trial number two. I always get pictures of my son and his music. Let me get the, the pictures, please. It's my son right here. I got a whole thing on my son. Look at him. <laughs> You can you think that little, that nice little boy gonna do something crazy like that? Nah, that's my boy. Look at him. All the rest up. It's my baby, man. My dad, man, that's my guy right there. He, he was always a good dad. It's just he was going through his vices and whatever he was going through. So he wasn't really able to be around as much as he wanted to. You know, I went away for 10 years, so I wasn't in, in his life. So we like we got like reunited, and then I got this news. In 2016, a third trial was conducted. And I told him I'll fly in. And he said, nah, bro, I'm coming home. This ain't about nothing, bro. Right before he, as he's walking in the courtroom. I know I didn't do it. God knew I didn't do it. I just had two mistrials. Going into the third, there was nothing to worry about. But he was so positive. You know, telling me that, don't worry about it. I didn't do nothing. Nothing's gonna happen. So I believe him because my son. While my mother's in the hospital fighting for her life, she don't know her grandson is in court fighting for his life. The lady who raised me, my heart, was on a hospital bed fighting cancer. And I remember that day. Jervis just sent a note. He said I'm about to get my verdict right now. Wish me luck, man. When they finally had the verdict, they broke us all inside the courtroom. Count one, assault in the first degree. I just heard. Guilty. Count two, criminal possession of a weapon in the second degree. Guilty. Right in the court, he got up and said, why, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? I didn't do anything. He started crying in front of the judge and yelling, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. He was sentenced to 17 years. And then my mom loses her battle to cancer. When I found out my grandmother passed away, I was hurt. I was waking up in tears. I just blew trial. I haven't even been on Rikers Island for a week yet. And I found out my grandmother died. I was hurt. From there, I went into depression. Like, I was drinking every day. Like, my mom dead, my son is gone too. No, I can't. I gotta be strong and fight for my son. Today is a big day for us. We out here protesting for my son, Diony Mejia. Hi, everybody. Got some shirts. Here, take this one. Me down. Right now, you're about to take this group picture. We out here, and you know, all the people gathered up. The community showed up, family showed up, friends showed up, everybody here. Y'all ready? Wait, 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 
wait. I got the banner. I got the banner. I got the banner. <laughs> Free hash on three. Yeah. One, two, three. Free hash. Yeah. You know it's all love. We out here supporting my man. He's an innocent man. He was wrongfully convicted and gave 17 years of his life. And we out here trying to get him free. What's your scream Better than the original. That song, no shade. That song, he, he went out his element with that song. That that one was, that was the hit right there. Man, this man is the greatest. I never heard anything like him. He's real. He's raw. He talks about his life through his music. He talks about his hard experiences, and now he just makes the best of it and puts it in something so beautiful. This man is innocent. We trying to get him out. This is the precinct we about to walk by that actually put this man in jail. They vicious, man. 23rd precinct, man. They've been doing that forever. An NYPD officer now on modified duty after a violent arrest. I've been watching the 23rd precinct do dirty stuff all my life. I can't respect what they doing over there. You're supposed to protect the neighborhood, not try to take them down. They used to see him all the time and jump out on him, search him, guns drawn, everything. like Beating you up, charging you for assault, and they fuck you up. It's trap life forever. Trapping is a sport. Hefe bands, man. Free Hefe. Till they say it backwards, you heard? He didn't even get to experience life yet. He was still a teenager. Someone's in there with this type of talent that was on his way and something crushing his dreams and crushing his life. Let's forget the music. It's crushing his life. And man, they took an innocent man away, man. Just talking to him, man. When he be talking to me, I be getting goosebumps when he called. Money, what's up, my brother? Hefe Benz, what the fuck is shaking, bro? Come on, bro, you know what's up. You know you my motivation, bro. You made it back on out of pill, bro. I'm praying, man. Right, right, you up next, nigga. You up next. I can't wait for you to get here, man. You better still be fucking writing in there, man. You still working, right? Bro, come on, you know I'm still writing. You know that, bro. Don't ever give up on them dreams. Let me hear something, man. Let me make sure you still got it. <laughs> I got you, I got you, bro. I said, this system was designed to fail. They denying us bail. I watched grown men crying themselves because nobody taking any prison calls. My dream was to win a Grammy. Now I only see my family on a visit floor. Right. Six hours from home, no, they wish they could visit more. Hurt my heart when they took me out my glory. And I heard my day one was trying to get at my shorty. That's a whole nother story. I ain't salty. It just told me. Once I called friends, they hold me down like I thought. When I got that time, I ain't see one of them in court. Judge gave me 17 years and I'm innocent. System let down Trayvon and free Zimmerman. Constitution promise equal protection. We ain't equally protected when they wrongfully accuse us. And them lawyers, they appoint us working with the prosecutors. Mm. Young and only a child locked up with a lifespan. Lord's trial, I was cuffed to a white right. man. He had the same charge as me, but they ain't charge him how they charging me. Because he ain't as dark as me. Disregarding my dreams and neglecting my artistry. Pray to God I make it through these dark times Cause they trying to do me how they did the Central Park Five Judges gonna be biased and the DA gonna lie 50,000 for the lawyer just so he could talk fly Still stop us and frisk us with their hands when he host us Quarantine us in cells like we got the corona Cartier's in the courtroom is part of my culture I'm innocent now, please, Gianna don't hold me So I could keep bowling on him for Gianna and Kobe Mama said, baby, you would have been signed by now Can't believe you up here doing all this time right now And them law books like Cockman in his prime right now Damn, I wish Cockman was alive right now You still that nigga, B? <laughs> you still that nigga, B? 
I met Hef in like 2016. You know, we both was fighting the pills together. And you know, he's staying strong. I was in there with him. It was rough. We seen a lot of foul stuff going on, man. From CO setting people up, abusing us, stealing from us. You got some people in there losing their sanity in there. Not half, man. Half, half stronger than that, man. Half, have energy. It was positive. He was always optimistic. Always in that law library. Always working out, keeping his mind strong, keeping his spirits good. I can't say I ever seen him mad. It could trap my body, but never my mind. My support system. That's the reason I keep going how I'm going. You know, after meeting him in there, after hearing his story, you could just tell that like wasn't him. You know, coming from the perspective of somebody that was in prison for something that they did. I couldn't imagine being locked up for something I didn't do. The system failed once again. It seemed like the justice system ain't granting you that justice because they don't want to hear you. It's breaking families down. Since that happened, my life changed, man. I, I, don't, I don't have a life. You know, that, that still messed me up because my, my first son. Because I remember when I went with my grandma on Friday. Did you get to take any pictures where you were? No, we don't get to take any pictures because, you know, the whole coronavirus thing. I miss everything about the outside world, man. The studio, performing, my friends, most importantly, my family. With everything going on, I'm just grateful they come see me every chance they get. It kind of sucks. Like, we can't do anything and we're doing this trip. What, the trip is like, adds up to like 14 hours. But, you know, it's all worth it because it's, it's my brother at the end of the day and that's my heart, so I'm going to do whatever. My sister, that's my ride or die right there. My sister be up here every single visit she get. I don't want him to feel down, and I just want him to feel happy. Ever since my niece was little, she loved my music. I think this was going to all fit, because I thought this was like a lot of food. They always got my back. They make sure I ain't up here starving. They're sending me the best snacks. The commissary always full, so I let them. Come see. <laughs> Look at me and Diani. <laughs> you remember the song? And baby, I can be the type of man you want. And baby, I can do it. And you want all this love. And it's called All This Love. I remember it. I want to thank everybody for coming out and showing support for my son Dionis Mejia. Still out here rocking for you, being real soon. Bring my brother, man. You heard? I'm soaking so dull with no shirt. The roof off, level so soft. My whole life, I'm so soft. Talking Rolex and all gold. Whole world out here. You gonna get your wrist frozen? Yeah, this one. I think this one. It has got your name written all over it. When they figure out he's innocent, they're gonna come home and stab. This system is crazy. This system is outlandish, man. They think they're gonna break me, but. I'm still in here, I'm not missing a step. I'm breaking every day, I'm working on my mind, and I know I'ma be back. Roll up, yeah. roll up. Yeah, I see your phone call, you know what? Bitch, I ain't picking up your phone call. So what, hold up, I'm thinking new. His freedom bigger than anything we could talk about right now. Than money, than clothes, and music. I'm fucking to my new CD, drop a mixtape, I'm fucking to my new CD. Then I'm passing to my bro like CP3. He's been in jail and away from his family for too long. Right now, they can say he coming home and he can't do music. Let my brother come home. It's his freedom. At least give him another shot. One day they gonna figure it out. They gonna figure out that they got the wrong guy. We just want our innocent home. It don't matter if it's Diony or anybody else going through the same situation. Do the right thing. That's all. Other than that, free half.